Greetings, English 110 students. Welcome to Unit 5. We are halfway through the term, so this is an important week. A uh, good time to check back and make sure that you have completed everything in the first half. Um, and if you have not, please reach out. Um, email is the best way to talk to me, except during office hours, obviously, and then calling Fuse is probably the fastest, but um, I answer emails very, very quickly. So if you have any issues, um, usually email is a great way to do it. Um, if you have missed something from previous units, or if you are, if I've asked you to redo it, um, let me know if there's anything I can do to help get that accomplished. Um, and in the meantime, then we will focus on, you know, keeping track and keeping up on everything going forward. All right, so I am going to share my screen with you and we're going to take a look at unit five's work as usual. We are coming in on the regular homepage where you will see uh, previous announcements. So let's go ahead then and click on unit five because that is where we are today. So our biggest assignment in English 110, and we've already started it because you started it last week, is the argument paper. And so this week you're still in, in continuing to work on your argument essay. Um, this week, we're going to focus on the introduction, so opening paragraph type thing, um, which will include a thesis where you're stating your main points that you're going to, to work on. Um, and you're going to be learning about how to create effective arguments. So you're going to have, of course, your readings and resources. You're going to have a unit discussion, and then you're going to have a unit five writing assignment. So let's take a look first at the readings and resources. You will notice as usual, we have things from our textbook, um, quite a few things. One section is on persuasive writing in general that includes an activity of how to structure your argument essay. So that's gonna help you as you are moving into creating the paper itself. Um, the next section is on fact, opinion, and bias, which of course all play important roles in argument. Um, there's a lot of talk about the fact that we need to use facts, 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 and that is true. However, when our opinions are based on facts, they can be used as well. I mean, really, technically, most things are opinion, not facts, um, but we will use both in arguments. So this section will kind of help you with that. And there's an activity there as well. And then we have a sample introduction. Now, please, please, please do not get entangled in this topic of cyberbullying because it is not one of the three potential choices that you will write about for your argument essay. This is literally just a sample so that you can see what an effective introduction paragraph will look like. You will not be writing about cyberbullying. You will be writing about one of the three assigned topics and we'll talk about those again in a second. You've talked, we've already seen them, came up last week. All right, let's go back to then unit five and look at the uh, discussion board first, fact versus opinion. And you're really defining those, right? So after you've read the uh, readings and, and, and done the activities, what would you consider to be the biggest difference between a fact and opinion? And why do you think people get confused about the difference between facts and opinions? At the end of your post, you'll have two statements, statement one and statement two. One should be a fact and one should be an opinion. Don't tell us which is which, okay? So that's part of what you wanna do when you're um, responding to your peers is to decide which one of their statements was supposed to be a fact and which one was supposed to be opinion and if they in fact are, okay? So as usual, you need to post your own response by Wednesday in order to get full points. And then you have until Sunday night, next Sunday to um, respond to at least two other students. All right, so that's your discussion board this week. And then your writing assignment this week is going to be just your introduction for the argument paper. So let me open this up. 
In this week's assignment, you will correct, write the introduction to your argument essay. And you've got a link here that gives you the, the full assignment sheet for the argument essay. If you click here, you are going to get the actual assignment for the argument essay, which as you will notice, the paper itself is not due until the end of week seven. So not this week, not next week, but the week after. So you are going to be working on it. You have full plenty of time to get everything done, but it's good to review this assignment sheet. And it may also be in your best interest to print this one out because this is something you're going to be using again and again and again. Um, so I'm not going to read this one to you. You should definitely read it. It's going to help you in thinking about how to introduce this paper by knowing what this paper is about. So let me close that. Um, the argument essay is due at the end of unit seven. This week, you just have to create the first paragraph for the essay. You will be able to get feedback from me, of course, and from your fellow classmates, and then you're going to revise it and, and change it before you do the full version. Now, this assignment is for this week's assignment. This is the one that goes over the requirements for just the introduction. So again, there's only three topics to choose from. Should there be a standard American minimum wage in all states? Should screen time be limited for children? And should American citizens be required to serve on a jury? So you're gonna use what you learned in your pro-con assignment for last week in unit four. And so you already should have a pretty good idea of how you're feeling, what your thoughts are on that. And then you're going to write a single paragraph, which is your first paragraph. Um, begins with a sentence that hooks the reader, grabs the reader's attention, finishes with your actual thesis statement. Okay. So have sentences that set up the issue by explaining the topic and then get into the controlling idea of your essay. So this is going to say, and I'll use one of these as an example, let's say I believe that American citizens should be required to serve on a jury. My thesis statement would be American citizens should be required to serve on a jury because X, Y, and Z. And those are going to be my reasons that I'm thinking about. Okay. I'm not going to give you uh, my reasons. I don't even know that I necessarily think that, but anyway, so that's what you're going to, that's what you're going to write. Notice under the requirements, this is going to be a word document or a PDF, just like we've done before. Your introductory paragraph should have at least seven sentences. The document should follow APA style, which means you will have a cover page. Um, you will not necessarily have a references page unless you are already citing something in your first paragraph. If you do, if you have a quote or a paraphrase from a source, then go ahead and put an, a, a references page as well. But typically the introduction is just from our own perspective. So if you've not used any sources, you will only have two pages. You'll have the cover page and the, pa and the paragraph. Um, if you have a source or more than one to report at this point, you will have a cover page, the paragraph, and then a references page. And remember all the way back in unit one, you can pull that template out um, I highly suggest using it. It's going to help you a great deal get all the possible points on your APA formatting. Remember, when you are writing in academic language, you do not use I. I think this should happen. I believe this should happen. We know it's what you think because it's your paper. So you just state it. People should have to serve on juries or people should not have to serve on juries. You don't need to say, I think people should have to serve on juries. So keep that keep that professional tone, um, get rid of all the first persons that you possibly can. And then of course, you still wanna proofread this just like anything else. You want it to be as perfect as it possibly can be. And then of course, as usual, you can take a look at the rubric and see how your grade will be determined on that. When you are ready to submit that, you are going to go back to the assignment itself 
and you're going to use this button browse local files do not click on write submission and just put it in the box you want to actually upload your word or pdf document and then click submit all right any problems or questions please 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 reach out i would be happy to help you and uh walk you through anything that needs walking through all right, everybody have a great week and I will see you on the discussion boards.